Hello everyone, I am Giovanni Busetti, chairman of group number 10, and this is our study of the vibrations of a V10 90 degree engine. We can start with a brief overview of our team composition. We have Mattia as our coordinator, then myself, Christian who made the CAD model, Marco and Sanchez have worked on the theory part, Leonardo took care of the graphics, and Filippo and Armando developed the MATLAB code. We decided to base our study on a BMW engine, the engine that powered the M5 and M6 car models. We have two main types of simulation, a speed drum from 0 to 8250 RPM and a simulation at constant speed. We started by making a 3D model of the engine. This was particularly useful to determine the inertial properties of all the components and the coordinates of every point with respect to the center of mass. To make the CAD model, the dimensions were taken from the engine datasheet, although some were missing and these missing dimensions were measured from analyzing high resolution images. As a result, we obtained a simplified model that is still very accurate in terms of weight and proportions. Here we have our engine model supported by the four engine mounts. We assumed all the mounts to be equal. To derive the equation of motion, we start from the Lagrange equation. Here we have the expressions of the kinetic energy, the potential energy, and of the non-conservative forces. And this is the equation of motion in matrix form. We can see that the stiffness and damping matrices have the same shape, and we also have some null elements, meaning that some degrees of freedom are decoupled. To study the kinematics of the system, we start from the acceleration of the single piston. Here we have the acceleration as expanded with the Taylor series up to the second order. We have that the first two terms are due to the angular acceleration, so during transient conditions, and the last two terms are due to the angular velocity. We decided to stop at the second order because, as can be seen from this plot, we have that it is a very close approximation of the exact acceleration of the piston. In fact, the mean error between these two curves is only about 5.3%. We move on to study a pair of pistons for each V. We have no forces in the X direction and we sum the forces for the Y and Z directions. Then we sum the contributions of each V to obtain the total forces on the engine. We transport these to the center of mass and we also obtain three moments. Here we can see the interaction of each V during a speedrun simulation. We have the lateral force, the vertical force, and the three moments. The plots of the moments are mainly influenced by the position of the points where the forces are applied in relation to the location of the center of mass. To study the engine vibrations we have developed two scripts. The first one involves the equation of motion that we have seen earlier and the second one applies model analysis. In this case we have used the proportional damping model and so we had to assume isotropic engine mounts across the three directions for both stiffness and damping. Both of the scripts that we developed start in the same way. We have to calculate the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. This is quite simple on MATLAB and we also take care of rearranging the frequencies in ascending order and of normalizing the eigenvectors. Here we can see the plots of our six mode shapes and also some animations that show which of the degrees of freedom are excited the most for each of the six natural frequencies. To validate these results, we added a control variable. If it's set equal to 1, we simulate the system to be undamped and we test the engine at constant speeds equal to the natural frequencies. Then we can compare the plots that we have just seen with the results of the system response and see if the degrees of freedom that we expect to be in resonance are actually in resonance. In this case here, we have the first mode and we have resonance condition for Y translation and roll rotation. This is just an example of one of the MATLAB functions that we developed to model the forcing on the engine. In this case, we are testing the engine at constant speed. We have the force array that is made of two vectors, one for the first order and one for the second order. Here we pre-allocate memory as we will cycle through each V of the engine within a loop. We define the accelerations as anonymous functions, functions of time. We do the same for the forces and for the moments and we put together the amplitudes and the phases to form a complex vector for the forcing. This is our first approach to solve the speed ramp simulation. So this first script solves the equation of motion by direct numeral integration with OD45. To be able to use OD45, we have to rearrange the system so that it is a first order differential equation. 
And this is the system response during the speed ramp. We can see that we have very little displacements for all the degrees of freedom. We have peak motion that is reached at about one second into the simulation. And that is because all of our natural frequencies are below 1000 RPM. So we meet them quite early in the speed run. Then as we move further away from the resonance condition, we have that the system response becomes more stable. This is our second approach to solve the same problem, the speed run simulation. Here we use model analysis and we apply the convolution integral with a response to the unitary impulse and with a new forcing vector, which is the forcing as projected into a model space. Then we have a final change of coordinates to obtain the actual time domain solution. So a big part of our study was measuring the performance of the MATLAB code, also timing the execution time with a TikTok function. We tested both of our two methods to see which one performed the best. Also note that they give the same results, so this helped us validating our study. We have that the direct numeral integration allows for a simpler implementation of the code, although it is considerably slower. In fact, it is over three seconds slower. On the other hand, if we use convolution integral, we have to manually adjust the time step of the simulation, so we have to find a compromise between the quality of the results and the actual code performance, whereas Audi45 automatically adjusts the time step. And last but not least, as we said before, the model analysis method requires the assumption of isotropic engine mounts. For the second part of the study, to test the engine at constant speed, we chose 800 RPM, which is a hypothetical idle engine speed. We were not able to find in literature the actual idle speed of the engine, so we decided to test 800 RPM, which is also close to some resonance peaks, then 1000 RPM, which could be a better candidate for the idle speed, and then 6100 RPM, which is where the engine delivers the maximum torque. To choose these speeds, we have made plots like these two, where we can see the amplitude of the response of every displacement as a function of the engine RPM. Also here we can see which components of the forcing vector excite a certain degree of freedom the most. To solve the equation of motion for a constant engine speed, which is the case of harmonic forcing, we use the forcing function that we have seen earlier. So we have a complex force, a complex solution vector, and then we simply take the real part of the solution. For our second script, in which we use model analysis, the structure is roughly the same. This time though, the two procedures are very similar and we have that no performance difference was observed by using model analysis. In both cases, we obtain our time domain solution, including the derivatives of all the displacements. Here we have the system response at 800 RPM. We measure a very low displacement. We have even lower displacements as we move further away from resonance and almost negligible displacements and rotations as we move into what we call the seismic region. To calculate the spectra, we have two possible options. The first one is to simply apply the FFT algorithm and the second one is to compute the Fourier transform analytically. If we compare the two approaches, we have that the first one is more simple but will not return the exact spectrum if the frequency that we are studying is a number with infinite decimal places. In this case, we have some non-zero entries for other frequencies near the one that we are studying, and so the peak is actually lower than expected. The second method always returns the correct spectra, and it's also easier to edit the time step of the results, because we can just do it manually without having to change the time step of the entire simulation, as is the case with the FFT method. Here we have our spectra. We mostly have first order components. To compute the forces, we use these simple formulas and in MATLAB we made them to be anonymous functions so that they are very versatile and we can use the same functions for both the speed jump and the constant speed simulations. These are the forces transmitted during the speed jump. We have separated the forces for each of the four mounts and we can see that some of the lines overlap each other. That is because of the symmetry of the disposition of the four engine mounts with respect to the center of mass. We can also note that the curves have the same shape and behavior as the ones of the system response. The forces transmitted at 800 RPM are quite high especially the vertical force, so this suggests that this speed is not particularly suitable for an idle speed and should be avoided. If we move to 1000 RPM, we have lower forces in all the directions, so this speed can be a possible idle engine speed. 
and at 6100 rpm we have even lower forces and displacements so it is an optimal working condition for the engine the displacements are almost negligible so we can say that the forces are mostly due to the dampers we have also developed a graphical user interface that is a mantle application we have the same code that was used in the scripts but in a more versatile and interactive format in the interface we can view all the plots of interest at once and in the right section of the screen we have the options to regulate the stiffness and damping values of the engine mounts as well as the simulation parameters. We also have the option to support potentially any V-engine configuration since it is just a matter of loading in a different data structure. We have used our app to choose the best values of stiffness and damping for the mounts of our engine. So we have tried different combinations of the two values and we have plotted the results. We can note that if the stiffness is low enough, this will cancel the importance of damping. We decided to go with a stiffness of 100,000 newton per meter because this allows us to register the maximum force during a speed drum simulation at a speed which is lower than the idle speed and this is the optimal condition. Then we move on to choosing a value for the damping coefficient. If the damping is too high, we will have a higher force in the seismic region of the speed drum, so in the working condition of the engine. But at the same time, if the damping is too low, we are going to have even higher of a force during the initial transient, the initial part of the simulation. So as a compromise between these two results, we chose 100 newton second per meter for the damping coefficient. Thank you for watching.